Welcome to Anywhere Math. I'm Jeff Jacobson, and today we're talking about adding rational numbers. Let's get right into it. So today we're adding rational numbers. As we talked in the last video, rational numbers, that includes all whole numbers, all integers. So we're talking about negative numbers as well. And fractions, decimals, terminating and repeating decimals. Uh, mixed numbers, both negative and positive of those. So we're talking about basically a lot of different types of numbers. So we're going to do some with fractions, some with decimals, uh, and maybe even a few with mixed numbers. So let's get started. Negative 8 thirds plus 5 6. Well, if you know adding fractions uh, or subtracting fractions, you have to have a common denominator. So right now, we can't add these together because that has a denominator of 3, that's at 6. So my first step is to make common denominators. My least common multiple of 3 and 6 is 6. So that's going to be what I want my common denominator to be. 5 6 is great. That needs to change to a 6, so I'm going to just get a times 2. Anything I do to the denominator, I have to also do it to the numerator. So this now becomes negative 16 over 6 plus 5, 6. Now we have common denominators, so now I can just add my numerators. Negative 16 plus 5 becomes negative 11, 6. That's an improper fraction, so I'm going to convert it to a mixed number. 6 goes into 11 once. I have 5 left over, so negative 1 and 5, 6. Okay. So remember, when you're adding or subtracting with fractions, you got to have a common denominator. Okay. Let's try another example. All right, so now we're adding decimals. So negative 4.05 plus 7.62. Uh, as you know, when you're adding or subtracting decimals, first thing, the most important is that you're always going to line up the decimals. Here, though, notice we've got a negative. So we haven't done this yet. Uh, when you have a negative and a positive decimal that you're adding together, some things are canceling out. And so to figure this out, it's a bit tough to do in your head, right? If it was just negative 4 plus 7, you think, okay, well, that negative 4 is canceling out 4 here, and I got 3 left. Okay, that's simple. But whoops, to actually go ahead and do that, what you would do is you take the absolute value of each, and whichever one's greater, that goes on the top. You're subtracting the least from it. So that would be 7 minus 4 equals 3. Okay. We do the same thing in this situation. Take the absolute value of each. Well, that would be 4.05. That would be 7.62. So I'm going to subtract 4.05 from this. Okay. And I know that because this is greater, my answer is going to stay positive. If this, if this was negative... Uh, instead of uh, this being negative, well, then my answer would be negative in that situation. So 7.62 minus 4.05. Notice my decimal points are lined up, and I just subtract. I'm going to have to borrow. That becomes 5, 12, 7, 5. Decimal points are staying in line, and that 7 minus 4 is 3. And I look... 7.62 was the greater absolute value. That was positive, so my answer is positive. 3.57. Here's some to try on your own. Here's our last example. Example 3, evaluate 2x plus y when x is equal to 1 fourth and y is equal to negative 3 halves. Well, we know when we evaluate... Uh, algebraic expressions and they give us values for the for the variables my first step is to substitute so I'm going to substitute 1 fourth in for X and negative 3 halves for Y now when you substitute you should start to get in the habit of using parentheses so the 2 is still there 
2x means 2 times x. So I'm going to have my parentheses. That's going to be 2 times 1 fourth. Okay. When I substitute, I'm using my parentheses. That's going to help keep things organized. Uh, plus, again, I'm going to use parentheses, negative 3 halves. I substitute that in for the y. Now, it's time to clean this up a bit, right? We're evaluating. We're going to simplify this. 2 times 1 fourth. I can put this over 1, and that helps when I'm multiplying it times a fraction. So before I multiply, I'm going to simplify. That 2 becomes 1. That 4 becomes 2. So this is just 1. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 half. Plus, using my parentheses, negative 3 halves. Just like that first example, i got to make sure I have common denominators, which I do, which is fantastic. So I just add uh, 1 plus a negative 3 gives me negative 2 over 2. Denominator stays the same. Well, negative 2 divided by 2 is just negative 1. And I'm finished. Here are some more to try on your own. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, if you like this video, please subscribe.